Most of you have probably heard of a creature called a daddy long legs. But did you know that this common name is used for multiple groups of invertebrates? So who's the real daddy long legs? And can we even agree on it? Common names are problematic, as one name often represents multiple different organisms, depending on the region and the part of the world where they're used, so it might get really confusing. The name Daddy Longlegs is a great example. There are three arthropod groups that get called Daddy Longlegs. I asked you in a poll which one would you call a Daddy Longlegs, and you can see the answers varied. In fact, I found out that there is even a planet that is referred to by this name, but let's leave that one aside for now. These are the three different daddy long legs. A crane fly, a member of the family Tipulidae, this spider, Falcus phalangioides, and finally a harvestman, another arachnid, a member of the order Opilionis. Looking at their classification, all daddy long legs are invertebrates and they are all arthropods. By looking at them, you might call them all insects, but in fact only tipulids belong to the class Insecta, while the other two belong to the class Arachnida. And even though at first glance they both look like spiders, only Falcus is a spider, belonging to the order Arani. Now when we know how related these species are, let's look at what we can actually observe about each of them. First we have our spider, Falcus phalangioides who you might also know under the common name cellar spider. These leggy spiders are distributed worldwide and are very common inside houses. Check out all the corners in your rooms, as there is a high chance you'll find one. These spiders can live for up to two years, and as they're living inside human dwellings, you can see them every day, all year long. On the other hand, crane flies are much more seasonal. There are hundreds of different species of crane flies, and different species are active at different times of the year. The adults live only a few days, so they don't hang around too long. You're most likely to notice a crane fly during the warmer months, when they might wander into your house through an open window, being attracted to light. And due to their appearance, you might think a giant mosquito flew in. However, they're mostly to be found outside, especially in moist, wooded places. So while you can easily observe cellar spiders and crane flies from the comfort of your home, harvestmen, on the other hand, rarely make it indoors, maybe with an exception of dark, humid basement. They like shaded, moist, dark places outdoors. In summer, you can see them under rocks or even on shaded walls. They especially like cracks and caves. There are thousands of different species of opilionis, and the preferred environment of each of them will vary slightly. One unifying character of all daddy long legs is, as their name suggests, their long legs. While Falcus and Opilionis have eight legs, Tipulids have only six. However, the main differences are seen in their bodies. While cellar spiders and harvestmen might be easily confused at first glance, as they both have a spider-like look, Crane flies are quite different. Dipulids are flies, so their bodies have wings, a pair of halters, and antennae, and they might look to you like oversized mosquitoes, expressed in their other common name, mosquito hawks. Their legs fall off quite readily, which is useful for escaping predators, but not ideal for collecting a specimen. This is common with opilionis as well, and as a result, you might not always count the right number of legs, so just be aware of it. You can easily distinguish tipulid males from females by looking at their abdomen. The tip of the female abdomen is pointed, whereas the male abdomen is blunt. Now on to our arachnids. The easiest character to distinguish Falcus from Opilionis is their body shape. While the body of Falcus is rather slim and divided into two distinct sections, cephalothorax and abdomen, the body of a harvestman is oval and appears to be only one segment. That's because the cephalothorax and abdomen are solidly fused together. The body of Falcus is smooth and semi-transparent, while opilionies generally have a solid, bumpy-looking body. 
Also, notice these conspicuous white projections at the base of their legs. Those are the coxi. In harvestmen, when you look closely, you can also see that the abdomen is composed of multiple segments, while it's only one segment in cellar spiders. Remember, harvestmen are not spiders. Just look at their eyes. Falcus has eight eyes, two in the middle and three on each side of the cephalothorax, although they're not easily visible. In harvestmen, we find only two eyes, which are clearly defined. Harvestmen also lack spinnerets. The special silk-making organs located at the tip of a spider's abdomen that is used for weaving webs. The silk is also used to wrap prey, like in this example where I captured a falcus wrapping a crane fly in silk, a daddy long legs eating a daddy long legs. This can happen either before the prey is dead and the spider is immobilizing it, so the spider can easily feed on it, or it can happen after the prey is dead when the spider wraps the prey in silk for better transport or to keep it for later. To eat the prey, spiders inject it with the enzymes that basically liquefy the inside of the body of the prey, so the digestion starts outside of the spider's body. The spider then feeds on the prey by sucking its liquefied body. Falcus spiders feed on various pesky insects that make it to your house and even on other spiders, so they can be quite useful to keep around as pest control. Opiliones feed on small invertebrates as well, but they might also enjoy some plant material or fungi, which is true especially for the tropical species, so we characterize them as omnivores. Unlike spiders, they don't liquefy their prey, but rather bite off and digest small chunks. And what about crane flies? The majority of their life is spent in the larval stage. During their time as a larva, they feed on decaying organic matter, plant roots and some even prey on other insects. Once they become adults, they don't need to eat and they might only lap up water droplets or nectar, for which they use their sponging sucking mouth parts. Remember, the adults live only a few days, just long enough to mate and lay eggs, so not much energy intake is needed. And aren't any daddy long legs harmful to humans? Contrary to some urban myths, they're not. Crane flies are not capable of stinging or biting, opiliones don't have venom, and falcus fangs are so tiny that you wouldn't even notice if they bit you. So what do you think about daddy long legs now? Did this video help you to distinguish the common suspects? Which animal will you call daddy long legs now? Or will you avoid the common names altogether? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.